Hello everyone, this is Lucia Fletcher and I am recording the Sunday School at Home for Sunday, February 21st. And the name of our lesson is Godly Fasting. And we have some uh, verses that um, really speak to me and it almost doesn't need very much teaching and I think more of us hearing and and um, listening to these words. The lesson comes from the Adult Bible Studies. The author are, are Taylor Mills and Bruce Batchelor Glader. And as y'all know, I uh, give my opinions and, and restate what they say uh, throughout the lesson. Now, this lesson comes from the book of Isaiah, and it is uh, chapter 58, verses 1 through 12. And the purpose statement is to identify the kind of fasting God desires from us all. Well, I can uh, tell y'all that um, I have never been one that fasted. Um, I don't know why, it just hasn't struck me as one of the spiritual practices that I, sh I should do. That might be the wrong way to say it, but, but it hasn't ever been something I felt compelled to do. And I know some people do, do fast. Um, in, in a religious sense. And of course, Lent is a time that people decide to give up things and, and to fast uh, at times for that. In the Old Testament, one of the things our author talks about is that God did not put down this rule that says, you know, you should fast one day a week or you should fast even one day a month. Said he really only gave them one day of fasting that he actually uh, proclaimed, that God proclaimed, and that was the Day of Atonement. And um, I wrote that down. It is September the 15th is the Day of Atonement for the uh, Jewish people. And um, sometimes we think that maybe uh, we're supposed to fast more, more than that, and, and maybe we are. I think that's a personal spiritual practice. Well, these verses really get to the heart of what God meant when he was saying to fast. And we just think it's food or junk or candy or, or whatever. So these are his words, Isaiah 58, 1 through 11. Shout loudly, don't hold back, raise your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their crime at the house of Jacob their sins. They seek me day after day, desiring knowledge of my ways. Like a nation, they act righteously. They didn't abandon their God. So right now, God is speaking to the prophet Isaiah. Now these next verses, God is really mocking. Uh, they say the house of Jacob, the tribe of Jacob. He says, why do we fast and you don't see? Why afflict ourselves you don't notice? And then the rest of these verses, God really explains what he wants from fasting. What he doesn't need is the loud shouting and raising their voice like a trumpet. This is what God means by fasting. Yet on your fast day, you do whatever you want and oppress all your workers. You quarrel and brawl and then you fast. You hit each other violently with your fist. You shouldn't fast as you are doing today. If you want to make your voice heard on high, is this the kind of fast I choose? A day of self-affliction? of bending one's head like a reed and of lying down in mourning clothes and ashes? Is this what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Isn't this the fast I choose? Releasing wicked restraints, untying the ropes of a yoke, settling free the mistreated, 
and breaking every yoke. Isn't it sharing your bread with the hungry, bringing the homeless poor into your house, covering the naked when you see them, and not hiding from your own family? Then your light will break out like the dawn, and you will be healed quickly. Your own righteousness will walk before you, and the Lord's glory will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and the Lord will say, I'm here. If you remove the yoke from among you, the finger pointing, the wicked speech, if you open your heart to the hungry and provide abundantly for those who are afflicted, your light will shine in the darkness, and your gloom will be like the noon. The Lord will guide you continually and provide for you, even in parched places. He will rescue your bones. You will be like a watered garden, like a spring of water that won't run dry. So that's why I said that really what's important from these verses isn't going to be much about what I say. It's going to be all about what God said that he thinks fasting is. And he is basically saying fasting is not being wicked. Well, so the author wanted to make sure we understood when God was speaking to Isaiah and when he was speaking to the house of Jacob and then when he was making it clear to all of them what he meant for fasting today. So I, there are a few things that I highlighted in this chapter that, that I thought were good. And it's this little chapter is called The Fast God Doesn't Choose. The problem in today's passage is that the fasting ritual had taken on, and he says this in quotations, the form of religion without the power. To borrow a phrase that John Wesley would use many centuries later. That was a John Wesley phrase. The people believed that God would listen to them if they just went through the motions. The thoughts they, they thought they could earn God's favor by fasting. Now, John Wesley didn't mind telling people what he thought about things. And that was one of his sermons was on fasting. And he called it a form of religion without power. And basically it means it's nothing. God was not impressed with self-infliction. You know, we've heard about people uh, <coughs> beating themselves and uh, wearing uh, rough clothing that hurt the skin and that they would uh, go, you know, days on end without eating. And, of course, that does have meaning um, to some people. It does have meaning based on, on what the purpose is. Um, how many of you, we have seen, haven't we, um, pictures on the screen of a different um, religious sex that march through the town on a certain day and beat themselves on their back to show how, you know, they are punishing themselves for their sins. or, or um, And then we hear about the other people that will go days without eating. And... Is that something that would really make a difference to God? If that happens on one day and on the next day, everything is as it was before. God was incredulous that they would desire knowledge of my ways like a nation that acted righteously, but then abandon the God. God would rather the people set free the mistreated, share bread with the hungry, provide shelter for the poor, clothe the naked. Note that these are nearly the same kind of causes for worry that Jesus spoke about in Matthew. Feed the hungry, clothe the 
naked. Visit those that are in prison. These are things that Jesus said that we do. He didn't say sit and go without food. So are we fasting from easy things when we give up our coffee for a week? Are we really fasting from what may be something evil in our heart? And that's what this lesson, those Bible verses are supposed to tell us. I highlighted these two paragraphs, and I hope you don't mind me reading them. Sometimes people get it in their heads that the Old Testament is all about proper rituals and that the New Testament is where God finally does away with the old rules and procedures. But today's passage is one that shows us that God has always been more interested in sincere, heartfelt religion than in empty rituals. God has long judged our worship by how we treat each other. Also note that God did not tell them not to fast or not to go through formal religious ceremonies. We should not assume that God does not like formal ritual, rituals in worship. In fact, God established many rituals in the Bible. What God objected to was how their formal religion didn't make a difference in their behavior and how they assumed it would curry them favor with God. Now, don't we get caught up in that sometimes and think, well, if I um, am in church and I uh, sit in my pew and I sing my songs or, or I listen to the praise song, songs and raise my hand because I love the music or the same, but then I go home and I'm just the same old person I was before I walked into the, the service, then, you know, what has it accomplished? So that is basically what this lesson is about. I want to read this um, at the end. He's, and he's talking about God wanted our light to break through. He said he wants our light to break out like the dawn. And it, we know that as it came to Jesus, Jesus then became the light. And these became the things that Jesus said should be important to us in our, in our religion and in our ritual. And this is his last sentence. And on this first Sunday of Lent, let us choose the kind of fast God chooses. Let our fast take a form that pleases God. God will answer when we call and will say, I'm here. Well, another Sunday has passed with at home, with at home Sunday school. And next Sunday is the last Sunday, February 28th. That'll be the last uh, lesson in this series that we've been doing. So I hope y'all have a good week and take care of yourself and enjoy this Lenten season. We're going to have Ash Wednesday and, and um, special moments during this week of Lent. So let me end in this prayer that the author wrote. As we begin this season of preparation for your passion, Lord Jesus, call us to self-examination. Where have we chosen the wrong fast? What kind of fast have you chosen for us? Make us faithful, Lord. Amen. See you next Sunday.